This is Bill Farmer. Welcome back to McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. Today we're going to start a new topic entitled Three Problem Solving Methods. Now there are many good methods for solving problems and rather than trying to give an overview of all the different possible methods, I would like to focus on three of my favorite problem-solving methods. And these are recursion and induction, little theories, and copy, modify, compare, and generalize, which I call CMCG. Okay, so let's start with one you already know something about recursion and induction. So I'm going to be review, uh, reviewing a bit of things we have talked about before. Recursion is a method of definition in which an object is defined in terms of itself. It's one of the most fundamental ideas of computing and it can make specifications, descriptions, programs easier to express, understand, and prove correct. And what goes with recursion is induction. It is a method of proof, and it's based on an inductive set, a well-ordered set, or a well-founded relation. And the proof method is given by an induction principle. So there's different induction principles for different situations. And then induction can be used to prove properties about these inductive sets, well-ordered sets, and well-founded relations. But it can also be used to prove properties about the functions that are defined on these entities. Now, I want to mention something that recursion and induction are often used interchangeably. The terms are often used interchangeably. The way I use them is recursion refers to the method of definition. Induction refers to the method of proof. Now, notice I, I had something called an inductive set. It would probably be better to call that a recursive set, but traditionally that is called an inductive set. It's an example of how these two terms are a bit mixed up. Now, recursion and induction are fundamental components of computational thinking. It's the two ideas that really give computational thinking a lot of power. So, we can say that there are three kinds of recursion and induction. Structural, and this is based on an inductive set. So this is a set that is defined inductively, or we can say recursively. And an example would be an algebraic type in Haskell. So often inductive sets are called inductive types. The second kind is ordinal. This is based on a well-ordered set. And we have seen an example of a well-ordered set that's a natural numbers with the less than relation. Now, uh, in computing, structural recursion induction is very common. Ordinal recursion induction is less common. It naturally comes up when you have very complicated situations. And finally, there is well-founded recursion induction. This is based on a well-founded relation. We're not going to say too much about that, about this today, but this is the most general way of thinking about recursion and induction, and structural and ordinal recursion induction are special cases of this approach. So let's talk a little bit about what a well order is. A well order is a total order. So a total order means we have a set of elements S, and they are they can be lined up in a linear fashion. So for, so for instance, we can, we can uh, put all our points on a line. Let's say that's A, B. And everything, if we're at C, everything to the right is bigger than C. Everything to the left of C is smaller than C. So this is a, what we call a total order. Sometimes it's called a linear order. So a well order is a total order that's Noetherian. We've talked about this before. Noetherian means that there are no infinite, 
descending sequences. So what that means is I can start with a sequence, pick a smaller value, and keep picking smaller values. And that cannot be infinite if it's Noetherian. So we know the natural numbers of the well order, because if we start with any natural number and pick a smaller natural number, eventually we run out of natural numbers. Uh, in a finite number of steps, we run out of natural numbers. So, so the natural numbers with less than is a well order. Uh, the integers with less than is not, because we could just start with, let's say, 3, and then pick something smaller, minus 1, and so forth. We can continue and form an infinite descending sequence. So the integers with less than is not a well order. Now, an interesting well order is this one here for number 3. It's a set S, which are a set of real numbers, or in this case, I should say a set of rational numbers. And we have, if we draw them on the line, we start with 0. Let's say we have 1 and 2. We start with 0, then we go to 1 half, then we go to 3 quarters. Wait, excuse me, I didn't do this right. We go to 1 half, then we go to uh, 2 thirds, 3 quarters, 4 fifths, and we just keep going. We have an infinite number. And then we also include 1, 1 and a half, 1 and 2 thirds, and so forth. So this is a well order. Why? If I pick a point here, any point here, and I go to the left, eventually I have, I'll drop out of the numbers between, or numbers greater than 1, just because the same reason I run out of the natural numbers if I go to the left, and then I'll jump in here, and I'll continue, and eventually I'll run out. So this is a well order, and it's if you think about it, it's roughly like the natural numbers and another copy of the natural numbers hooked together. The final example is S is a set of strings over some finite alphabet, and less than is lexicographical order, the kind of order you would see in a dictionary. So that order means that AB is less than, let's say, BC, because A is less than B, and AB is also less than AC, because it, the A's are the same, but B is less than C. Okay, so let's review a little bit. In Haskell, we define this algebraic data type called NAT. This is an example of an inductive set. And it has two constructors, zero and successor. And we, we looked at how you can define on top of this, this um, uh, type NAT, NAT plus, which represents addition, and NAT times, which represents multiplication. And then there is what's called weak induction. This is the structural induction principle for NAT. So that's what weak induction is. This is also called mathematical induction. In high school, often people call it mathematical induction. But remember, there's many different kinds of mathematic, uh, mathematical, or should, I should say, many different kinds of induction principles. This is just one of them. So this principle says for any property, if the property holds at 0, and it holds at the successor of x whenever it holds at x, then it holds at x for all natural numbers. So this is weak induction. And we can use this to prove properties about NAT, and we can prove properties about recursively, recursively defined functions in NAT, like NAT plus and NAT times. So in particular, we could, we could prove that the commutativity property of NAT plus and NAT times hold. OK, so this is one way to think about the natural numbers. We can think of the natural numbers as being an inductive set. Another way of thinking about the natural numbers is we can think about it as a well order. And so as a well order, we have the natural numbers with less than. We have another principle 
and this is the ordinal induction principle, which is called strong induction. And it's a little different. It says for any property, if we can show P of X holds whenever P of zero, P of one, P of two, up to P of X minus one hold, then P of X holds for all N. And notice here, we have to show P of X, and we can assume that P holds for everything less than that. This is a bit different than what we had up here with weak induction, because here we have to show that P of the successor of X holds, and we, can only, we only use the fact that P of X of X one less than that holds. So, so this is, so with uh, weak induction, we, we, only, we can only assume this, and we also have to show that it holds at zero. Uh, notice that if X is zero in this case, there's nothing less than that. So built into strong induction is showing that the property holds at zero. Now, strong induction is also called complete induction and it's also called course of values induction. Now the interesting thing is weak and strong induction are equivalent to each other. And I won't go into the proof of why they're equivalent, but basically I can use weak induction and I can, instead of using my property P, I can use another property, let's call it Q, and that property is that not only does P hold, but it holds for everything less not only does P hold at X, but it holds for everything less than X. If we use that kind of property with weak induction, we can prove strong induction. So weak and strong induction are equivalent to each other. There is no difference in their strength. So you may be wondering, well, why do we call strong induction strong? Well, it's called strong induction because it provides a stronger induction hypothesis than weak induction. With weak induction, our induction hypothesis is just that P of X holds. With, with strong induction, it's P of X minus 1, P of X minus 2, 3, everything less than the X that we're looking at. Okay, so we're going to stop here, and we're going to continue next time with the second problem-solving method, the method of little languages. So, okay, so see you next time.